welcome back to my channel, Treetop Flight, where I'm documenting the build of my Rans S21 outbound plane. Um, first, a disclaimer uh, that none of my videos are instructional. I'm a first time builder and I'm documenting content that I think might be of interest uh, to the plane community in general or maybe to other builders. Um, this is the second video of my fuel tank installation. In the first video, I mentioned I made a mistake. Um, and I'll cover that in this video. It's with the fuel uh, air vent drill out procedure. Uh, Rans did change the process sometime prior to my kit. Many of the videos prior to mine show the old process. Uh, so if you are a builder looking at videos, the process did change. Make sure you're, you're consistent with your instruction manual and the processes that you're watching on videos. Um, I'll cover a lot of that in the video. Um, but with that, let's get started and finish up the fuel tank installation. Thanks for watching. I've got the tank support now inserted. The extra uh, cutting of the side was fairly easy. I used the Dremel on the blade and just handcrafted around that circle. So this is now inserted. The tank support is underneath. And I've put this, what they call a junk bolt. It's a two inch long 3 16th bolt that is screwed into that tank support. And this allows me to swing the cap around. And what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna put the pro seal, which is the tank sealant, on the bottom side of this cap. We're gonna swing it around and then screw it down with these machine screws which I've got laid out ready to go. Okay, here we go. Let's see how this works out. We set the scale to zero. And we're 34.2 grams. So I need one tenth, so I need 3.4 grams of the hardener. 3.4 grams of the hardener. So we're at 34.3. That looks like it's going to be too much. Thirty-four-point three. Uh, so we were at 34.3, we need to add 3.4, it's 37.7, if my math is right, uh, boy, I nailed it, 37.8, good enough for government work. Okay, so now we're going to take the hardener, we'll mix it in, make sure I get all of that, and we want to mix it, and we should come up with a, a gray, consistently consistent color. Hold that down there. I mixed up a second batch and we're going to go to a manual process of just applying it uh, to the ring using this uh, wooden stick and we'll just do it as if it was a baker bag and just getting it all the way around the ring. We get it around each of the holes. We want to create a seal all the way around. Okay, it feels like I've got a pretty good layer of the chem seal all the way around the ring. And without trying to get it on everything, which is probably a little late for that, here's my vent hole. So this is, goes here. I'm going to take my, my junk bolt. Screw it 
screw it down into my my flange which I've got on it so now I've got to hold this up while I take these two out My other one, and I'm starting to get pro seal on stuff. Make sure my cap is in there correctly. Okay. Hold on to this junk bolt while I lay this seal down. I am pressing down, holding this one up. Let's get some machine screws in there. Okay, I got the Now I'm just pressing down the seal. You can see the coming out from the side, so I'm getting a seal on it. And our procedure is going to casket. Okay, holy mackerel. I've got it in. Uh, let's see if I can clean this edge up a little bit without making a disastrous mess. Uh, I hope I can figure something to clean this cap up a little. It's not like caulking a baseboard, I'll tell you that much. So I feel I've, I've created a pretty good smooth seal around here and I'm going to want to get that tape off before it hardens too much kind of like in painting when we get the paint on you want to get your masking tape off before the paint dries so I think I've got a seal oh boy have I got a mess on my nice shiny cap Okay, I'm going to let that set for just a minute. We'll see how this goes. Uh, I did clean the surface off and smooth out the edges. I used paint thinner and a rag, very, very tight rag, so I didn't get it down into the current pocket. And I cleaned the top up, seemed to clean up real well. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the tape away now so that I have a, a, a better seal and uh, a better... A better line, I guess we used to call it. So let's see how this works while it's still wet. Uh, I should have a glove on because it probably looks like I'm going to need to seal it again with my finger. But that is going to be under the skin. Ah, this stuff is horrible.
Okay. Okay. Into the trash. Now, do I re-smudge it? The skin's gonna come around. It's underneath the skin. There's no visibility. I don't think I need to re-smooth it. It's already smoothed out once. I'm gonna leave it like that. Let it harden a little bit. Then I'm gonna take my screws out one at a time, clean them, and put them back in again, which is what the instructions say. And then I think I've done with that part of the seal. And I believe we do one more application of the Pro Seal after we get the tank in. We fill this gap up inside the skin so if you over if you spill any gas it won't go into your wing but i think that's a separate app that's a second application um but for this one i i think we're good so i'm not sure if that's 100 percent the best way to do it but it worked for me baker's bag method did not work this one seemed to work i think i'm in a good place thanks i've let the uh chem seal set up and dry and it is harder than rock and feels pretty good the next step is to remove the screws one at a time and apply the uh, 7th Dow 730 sealant to the threads. These five threads and then the air hole thread are what use this Dow 730. Uh, I haven't done the air hole yet because uh, there's some indication to let do the uh, leak test first and then put that in second. Uh, the other thing is the uh, manual is a little confusing if you come to the picture uh, right here where they're talking about applying the sealant they say to use item number 31 you come down to your parts page and it ends at item 30 or number 30 right next to it is the air hole uh, air filler sealer and they're telling to use part 22 which in fact part 22 is the Dow 730 sealant. I'm assuming this is an error. I have put a message out to the builders forum so before I actually do it uh, I'm going to get confirmation from the builders forum that this is a this is supposed to be 22 not 31 but I hate assuming the manual is wrong so I want to get confirmation before I do it. If I continue with the video that means I did get confirmation on it. Thanks to the forum uh, I figured this out I have got revision D on this fuel tank assembly page. Uh, a prior builder sent me his parts list, which was revision C, and it showed item 31 being the Dow 730. The Dow 730 is now item 22. So when they updated the fuel tank uh, list page, they forgot to update uh, the diagram page still showing the item 31. That should be item 22, which is Dow 730, which does go into the screws and the air holes screws. My next step is to install the fittings. This is one of the gas fittings. Uh, there's an upper and a lower uh, gas fitting. This is where your sight hose is going to go. Uh, this also uses a sealant. This is the number 8 sealant, and the number 8 just says thread sealant and this is a different sealant this is the uh, loctite 567 sealant uh, much less expensive than the uh, dow 730 but this is for uh, the gas fittings uh, that go from the header tank and then i also believe we're using it down here i'll double check in a minute um, but i'll get these installed this is just a simple uh, twist and seal and line them up I've got the screws reset with the Dow 730. The air hole still is not drilled. I'm going to do my pressure test first before I drill that. So that's with the Dow 730. And then I've got my fuel line. The inner nut is with the Loctite blue. And then the outer fittings are with the uh, Loctite 767. It's the other sealant. So all of the fittings there. I have hooked up a hose. I haven't cut it. They just said to slide it on without the clamps for the pressure test. You only put about one or two pounds of pressure in there. Uh, so I'm looking around. I'm going to put my pressure test in the, the uh, drain fitting. But I'm looking around my uh, parts and plumbing box to see if I've got fittings to hook up a pressure test. I'm about to do my pressure test. 
I've got everything sealed up. I think I mentioned before, I've got the hose on there. It's not cut to length, it's just put on. Uh, this is closed up and sealed. I do have my withdrawal valve assembly kind of put together. There's a little bit of a gotcha on that, just to point out. Uh, in the parts page, it tells you to look at your engine uh, install for the parts list on this. It shows the parts, but it doesn't list what they are. Um, so you have to go to the Titan engine manual in the RANS download and download that separately and you'll find the parts list there. So these are correct. I did attach it with a seal, a thread sealant. And then I hooked up uh, a pressure test. We use this uh, for gas, gas pressure test, so it's a low, a low PSI. Uh, I bought a little additional hardware at Home Depot to convert this to a tube. Clamped on the tube, got it on here. Uh, I'll put a couple pounds in there and make sure my tank doesn't inflate. And with gas, we leave them in there for, for a day. So I may test with the, I've got the, uh, the bubble test. This stuff will foam up. You put a little bit on all the joints and it foams and bubbles if you've got a leak. Uh, so I'll test it with that and then leave it uh, for a few hours. Make sure my pressure doesn't drop. And we should be good to go. Should be good to go with a pressure test. Someone's making a lot of noise over here. Who's making a lot of noise? I hear you. What? What are you screaming at? Well, I'm doing it right. I'm following the manual. Well, okay. I'll change it up. The pressure test is complete. Uh, in checking all the fittings for bubbles, I couldn't get any bubbles from any of the fittings, which is good, of course, but I was losing pressure on the gauge. Uh, the pressure would be gone in about Oh, two to three minutes, I'd be back down. And by the way, it only takes about a half a pound of pressure before the tank starts to deform. At a full pound, it'd probably blow up like a balloon. Uh, I also went to my compressor to blow it up. Uh, the good old floor pump uh, took a little bit too much time, so I just went to my pressure gauge, uh, put about three quarters of a pound in it. Uh, where it turned out it was leaking was at my cap. Uh, this cap after you put it in, after you put it, let's see if I can do this, after you put it in, it rotates and then snaps down. If this uh, nut on the bottom is too loose, when it snaps down, it doesn't create a tight enough seal with this gasket. So I tightened this up a little bit and adjusted it, uh, and then I re-pressurized re the tank and it held. So not only did I not get bubbles on my fittings, uh, fittings all look good. Uh, the tank uh, cap needs to be adjusted also. The next step is to install 3 8 gas line uh, to the fitting, the aft fitting. Uh, I did have to put just a little bit of laundry detergent on that fitting to get that hose to slide on. I struggled with it without it, and I didn't want to bend this out of shape or create any problem with once I put a little detergent on there, it slid right on. They provide clamps, clamped it up. The right side you cut to 85 inches. The left side you cut, cut to 65 inches. And there's probably six or seven inches left over after that. Uh, next, I just drilled the 3 8 inch hole for the air vent. And then it says to vacuum out the inside as best you can. And then install the tank back into the wing. So we'll pick up from there. Okay. So this is where I want to talk about the mistake that I made, and I'm taking accountability for it, uh, but I do want to warn others uh, who might make the same mistake. At this point in the process, you've leak tested the tank, and you look at item number 26, and it says right after the leak test, remove the sight gauge tubes. Now remember the sight gauge tubes weren't cut, they were just put on there, they weren't clamped, they were just slid on for the test. And then number item 27 says, quote, drill the 3 8 hole in the tank for the vent. Now what you've got to remember is that the uh, tank hole is not drilled but your tank assembly is put together and the tank assembly includes the ring on the top sandwiched with the tank in the middle and then that flange support flange on the bottom and that whole thing is clamped together screwed pro sealed but you've got the plastic tank sitting undrilled but you've got the hole in the cap uh, ring top and the flange when i drilled that 3 8 hole 
I took my 3 8 bit and right down and drilled the hole. What I forgot to realize is that flange on the bottom contains the threads that your air vent screws into. So really what you need to drill is you need to drill through the top ring and then you've got to get your bit just into that eighth of an inch of plastic material that makes up the tank. But if you go any further than that, you're now drilling into the threads that your vent screws into. Um, so without a warning, it's pretty easy just to stick that 3 8 drill and go down there and, and uh, drill through. Uh, a couple builders, when I brought it up, said you should have thought about that. You should have realized there were threads there. Um, you got to think about the whole build and not just read the instructions. Well, I missed it. Um, so at this point now, as I go to put that, that uh, air vent screw in, there's no threads and it just goes in and out. Now I've got no threads in that aluminum flange support uh, that I've got to screw these threads in. So after discussion with Rands and coming up with a solution, um, what they told me to do is to put Healy coils in there. And the Healy coils where you tap out the 3 8 and I've already drilled it, you tap that out to a little larger size and these aluminum coils screw in and they actually will create a new thread base for that um, air vent to go into. So I did do that. I ordered the Healy coils online and the tap set. I didn't have the tap set. The tw I think it's 25 64th bit to get the hole big enough for the Healy coil. It's a very specific drill size. You tap it very slowly using some oil and going back and forth, back and forth uh, to tap it in. Uh, and then this Healy coil, I did put uh, thread sealant on the Healy coil uh, and screwed that in. Uh, and then I've screwed in the um, air vent and the last uh, quarter inch or half inch of the air vent, I did put some chem seal around it. So as it went down, you had the threads with the thread seal and then the chem seal or the pro seal on the very top half inch to seal the whole thing up. Um, Rand said this was very doable, very workable. It is just an air vent. It doesn't have to be completely airtight. I mean, the whole concept here is you're letting air into the tank, um, but you don't want gas splashing up into those uh, threads and causing any problems. So that's the mistake I made. Um, I was afraid I was gonna have to order a new tank and redo the whole tank that was not required, but tapping and threading and putting these Healy coils in to create the, um, the thread was a process. In the second tank, many of the builders advised that rather than do the pressure test and put it together with the tank, is to drill out that tank at the same time you drill out the holes for the screws, for the machine screws, and then just put a, a bolt in there when you do your pressure test. I put some, on the second wing, that's what I did, and I put a little pipe tape on there, screwed the bolt into the threads, that held my, uh, my uh, uh, pressure. Um, and then when that was all done, unscrew the bolt and you can screw your air vent in. The problem is the air vent's got a hole in it, so you can't use that for the pressure test. Uh, so that's what I would recommend. That's, that is actually a recommendation for other builders. Um, trying to hit that drill bit so you just catch that plastic tank and don't go any deeper. That's a real touch and feel situation. And I think you risk uh, stripping the threads. So that's, uh, that's what I did. That was the mistake. Um, I got through it, I got the second tank in, both tanks tested positive, and I moved on. The next step is to slide the tank back into the wing, which I've done. Uh, I did paint my, my root rib. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into my painting process because it's probably the, one of the weakest of my skills. I did use a primer. I used a, the, uh, the matching color that I'm going to do part of my exterior with, uh, and I use a single stage. Um, uh, auto paint, Omni, uh, PBG uh, auto paint uh, is what I use. It's single stage, so I did not have to clear coat it. Okay, uh, just getting to this point took a lot longer than I planned. A lot of hours involved here. Uh, two things came up. Getting this root rib in and getting all the Clecos into the tank supports that are that third layer of material. You get the rib, the skin, and then the tank support and getting those Clecos all the way through. It's just hard lining them all up and getting them all lined and pushing them so that the rib goes underneath the skin. 
but I got that done. I got my fuel uh, sight gauge installed, and then I had to take the whole thing apart and reroute the fuel line coming out of the tank. It's supposed to go through that bottom grommet, and I had it through the, the large opening. So I had to, after I got it all completed, about to rivet it, I realized I'd take it apart and reroute the fuel line. So it's at a spot now where we rivet and then we pro seal the lid around the, the edge. So I'm going to move on to that. Okay, here's my plan. Uh, I've taped all the way around the hole. I used one piece of tape to go from the skin over the cap. And then I used an X-Acto knife to trim the cap and to trim the skin. The plan is to stuff the Pro Seal down in there, get it underneath the skin so it's on the cap for it's a nice seal, and then use my finger to create kind of a fillet lip around and then pull the tape off when it's fairly wet so I get a nice clean line um, and create a nice, uh, a nice Pro Seal uh, seal. Okay, my glove was somewhat clean so I could get up here and show you. Uh, I used the, uh, the, the flat end of the stick. I did pick up the skin using my, uh, uh, my little guy and I picked it up and then I pushed underneath kind of spatula style uh, as much chem seal as I get underneath. The, kins, the skin settled down. Now it's just to dip your finger in a little water and create a, a billet around it. So that's my next step, but it looks like I got a lot underneath. I used up the whole cup, or I didn't make a whole cup, but I got a lot under there. So I think it'll squish down nicely. Should form a good seal. So I think I, think I got it. The Pro Seal seemed to work. I got my fillet around the edge. It's hardened pretty well. This is the next day. We're almost 20 hours. And all I have to do is screw in my fuel vent, making sure that the hole is facing forward. I believe I'll recheck it and you use some thin or thick washers to make sure the spacing is correct with some sealant, different type of sealant, but that's it. And then the wing is finished and then it's a copy and paste for the other wing with a tank and my wings are done. Well, that completes the wing tanks. Uh, so my wings are done other than the tips, the wing tips, which I'll do uh, later in the build. Um, as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, my tanks took me 62 hours uh, 62 or 63 hours to do the, the tanks. That includes the error and fixing the error. Uh, my build to date through the tanks is 407 hours. As you can see, I'm well on to the fuselage. I've attached the cage to the fuselage and done a lot of work there. So I've uh, got enough content to put out another video uh, on the fuselage. Uh, I hate taking away from my build time uh, putting to do the editing, but I am enjoying the editing and documenting my build. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And just remember, just dream it, just build it. Take care. Thanks.